Yes. How we doing, family? Doing all right? Yeah. Good. I got my, uh, my Bible out here. Let me, let me get, let me get to my, my, my page here. How we doing? Good? Yeah. If, I have had not the, if I had not had the pleasure of meeting you, my name is Eddie Rivera, and I am privileged to be the location pastor here at our Winter Park location. And I don't, I don't, thank you. All right. A little bit of love. This is the home crowd. This is the home crowd. I'll tell you, I'm honored to be here. I'm honored to be in this role. I don't take this role lightly. I, I really believe, call it crazy, that, that, the, that the creator of the universe, that, that, that in the span of eternity that he would have it, that I'm here and you are here, that we are in this room. That's not a coincidence. This is not luck. This is not happenstance. This is not just some stars aligning. This is God's divine plan. And I'm honored and privileged to take God's platform in an effort and in an attempt to, to make much of him. I'll tell you, this was, a, this was an answered prayer. Just being here and, and seeing this and seeing all the life change. This is an answered prayer. Back in 2017, we, Action Church, were in pursuit of purchasing this building, uh, purchasing this property. And there were multiple offers on the table. And we came in, I think we were the fourth or fifth group that, that made an effort to, to secure this asset. And God would give us tremendous, tremendous favor. And we were able to secure the contract for, 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 for our location, for this building, for this land. And we enter into the due diligence period. And during the first week of the due diligence period, I'm, I'm requesting all this due diligence material from the seller. And, and basically, due diligence is the inspection period. And, and I'm reviewing that stuff. And, and something happened. Something happened in my spirit. I really believe that the Holy Spirit would impress on my heart a question. And this question, the question was, would you put down your nets and follow me? And, and I was wrestling with that because I thought I had already done that. I had given my life to God. I had given my, my life in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a posture of saying, God, use me in this life. I was already on staff here at Action Church. We had reallocated some of our businesses, and I, I put some great leaders to take my spot, to take my role. And so I was troubled by that. And I said, God, what, what? And so this whole week, I was just waiting. I was just praying. I was taking up a posture and saying, God, what does that mean? And at the end of the week, in a time of worshiping God, I responded and I said, yes, Lord. I will put down my nets and I will follow you, Lord. I really believe. Yeah, yes, Lord, I will. I will. And the very next day, I called up Pastor Justin. He was up in Birmingham, and I said, Pastor Justin, I know, I know you may have your whiteboard already filled with, with prospective people who can do a phenomenal job in leading this location. People with seminary, uh, seminary degrees or, or people with years of ministry experience, with the influence that God has given you in this life and with, with churches and in America, I'm sure you could bring anybody. But I just want to let you know that something happened in my spirit, something happened here, and I would love that you would at least consider me. Real quick, can we just honor Pastor Justin and Pastor Stephanie Daly? I'll tell you, I get the privilege and the honor to seeing them up close and personal. And their commitment and their drive and their passion for seeing people reached and connected is unbelievable. And so it changed. That, that conversation, that phone call, it changed it all. Something, something shifted for our family. Something shifted for me personally. And I remember I would go down Cimarron. 10, 11, 12 o'clock midnight, walking down the streets and seeing the helpless and the hurting and, and the harassed. And I began to pray. I began to pray. Our family, this is a picture of our family here. Let's see. There we go. Those are my kids right there. And this, before this place looked like this, it looked like that. It was, it was, it was in a, a lot of renovations went into this place. And thank you for, for your generosity in, in setting an environment like this. But, but this was right here in the middle. And our kids, we would, I would put on my boom box. I don't even know if you call it that anymore, but, but the boom box. And we would, we would take up a posture just asking God, believing God, that this would be a place where people could come to know him. That this would be a place where people would find freedom. That they would discover their design and discover their purpose. And that they would put the gifts and the talents that God has given them to use. And so this is an answered prayer. Four weeks of Songfest. Four weeks, we just finished that up. And I'll tell you, in four weeks, this location alone, over 100 people went from death to life accepting Jesus. And real quick, real quick, if that was you that, that raised your hand, that said that prayer, accepting Jesus in your life, or you renewed your commitment to him, uh, know that next week we're going to do some baptisms here. And the Great Commission is said, go, make disciples and baptize them. Go, reach, 
make disciples, connect, and baptize. It didn't say baptize when, when, when you're not in a pandemic or, or when the conditions are right. So don't worry about it. I saw the team. The team, they got me this face shield. I got a face shield that goes up here. My, my, my team, they got, they got some chlorine tablets for the pool. And so you're going to make it as you take your faith public. You guys excited to be here today? All right. I got this word in me. I got this word in me. I'm excited about today. And if uh, you're taking notes, write this down. This is the title of the message. Play the hand. Play the hand. Any poker players in the house? Okay. All right. All right. Thanks for your honesty. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah, you're in church. It's okay. It's all right. Well, it's an illustration only. So, so please don't be offended. Don't send a bunch of emails in. Uh, whoever that is that keeps on sending the emails, please stop. Uh, <laughs> and any anyway, poker players, let me explain the game. There's a dealer. There's a dealer and there's players. And the dealer issues out cards. It's called a hand. And, he, and I'm doing Texas Hold'em here. So each player gets two cards. And then the dealer, throughout the, 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 the span of the game, he puts out three additional cards. Now, it's very important to know that the players have no clue or no control over the cards in which they receive. And at the end of the game, at the end of the process, the player with the best hand of five wins the game. Eddie, why are you talking about poker on, on God's platform? What, 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 what's the point? The point is this, poker and this life are very similar. You see, God has given all of us a hand. He's given all of us uh, uh, abilities and talents and attributes and personalities, and we are to use them in this life. The difference, however, unlike poker, this life isn't a game. And you will be held responsible responsible. You will have to give an account as to what you did with the gifts and the talents that God gave you. If you have your Bible, please turn to Matthew 25 as I further illustrate this point. Matthew 25 verse 14. This is the parable of the talents. And real quick, it's important to know there's 40 parables in the Bible. All of them in some way, shape or form are tied to salvation. And this is a vivid depiction of the kingdom and what is going to happen one day. And so real quick, we're going to go through this and we're going to read a little bit here. So, but pay attention. Tell your neighbor to stop touching you and, 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 and it's, it's game time. Here, here we go. Uh, verse 14. Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. Very important that God gives you things, gives you this, these attributes, gives you these personalities and these gifts according to your ability. He knows you. He created you. Verse 16. The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earn five more. The servant with the two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who had received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. One had five, one had two, one had one. The guy with the five did what? He invested it. He, he went to work. The guy with the two did the same. The guy with the one didn't. Verse 19, after a long time, their master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used the money. The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver. To invest, he had an understanding of the expectation of the master, and I have earned five more. Look at the master's response. Look at the, look at the response to the guy who, who invested and who put in the, the work necessary and who gave a return back to the master. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Come, let's celebrate together. Verse 22, the servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest. Again, the right, the right understanding of the orders of the master, the expectations of the master. And I have earned two more. The master said, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling the small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. Come, let's celebrate together. Wait up. He received the same praise and the same reward as the guy with the five, which indicates that it doesn't matter the amount of talents that you get, but it matters what you do with them. Verse 24, 
Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were harsh man, a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid. I was afraid. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. So two things there with the servant with the one talent. And by the way, before you say, oh, well, he only had one talent. One talent at that time was over 20 years wages. And, and you may be in here and say, I may not have something, but yes, you do. And you got plenty for this life. But, but look what happened here. He had a misunderstanding of the expectation of the master. And then he was gripped by fear. And there are some of us in here, there are some of us that are watching online, that we have a misunderstanding of who God is. And, and we're gripped by fear. We're gripped about what may happen if we step out and we go to work. Let's see how the master replied to the talent with the one, or with the, with the servant with the one talent. Verse 26, but the master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I had harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I would have had some level of interest on it. Which means that, that ignorance or, or, or your, your, your lack of understanding of who God is is not an excuse. Verse 28, then he ordered, take the money from the servant and give it to the one with the 10 bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given. And they will have an abundance. I need you to hear this right now. I need you to hear this. This is Jesus talking, by the way. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's going to come a time, family, and I really believe that I'm here to share this word right now with you. There's going to come a time that you're going to have to stand before the Father, before the Master. And you're going to have to give an account to what you did with the gifts and the talents that God gave you. There's going to be two questions that are asked of you on that day. And there is a day that, that, that your time here on this earth will expire. And you're going, to ask, you're going to be asked, what did you do with my son? And we'll talk about that later. And what did you do with the gifts and the talents that, that I gave you? And I have four points. If you're taking notes, I have four points right here. Check this out. If you do all four, you will be guaranteed success in this life and in the life to come. I know that's a bold statement. I know that's a bold statement, but I stand by it. Who's ready for them? You guys ready for them? All right. The first one, you can't quit. You can't quit. Hey, let's be real. This life is hard. This life is difficult, right? This, it, we, we were just, I was just talking about those prayer this is, this is a challenging life, but you have to develop a mindset. You have to develop a posture that no matter what comes your way, that quitting, quitting is not an option because it's not over. It's not over until God says it's over. Can anybody tell me who this guy is right here, this handsome fellow? I try to match up my, my gear with him today. Who, well, let's put this on the screen here, family. Let's put this on the screen right here. Well, where's my, there he is. There he is. Can anybody tell me who this is? Online, online. Go, go ahead. Put it in the comment section. Nobody can tell me who this guy is. Okay, good. All right. It's going to work. This guy's name is Jack Strauss, a.k.a. Treetop. And I, I'm matching with him today, a little blue. I wanted to dress like that, but Nelson stopped me. Thank you, baby. I love you. So this is Jack Strauss. And in 1982, this picture was taken in 1982, and he's playing at the World Poker Tournament. And he's sitting down, and, and my man lost. He loses. He loses the game, and, and, and he, he gets up, and he's saying goodbye. He's a gentleman. Jack Strauss is a gentleman. And he, he puts up his chair, and he looks down, and he sees one chip. He sees one chip remaining. And so Jack Strauss comes down. He sits back down, and he played that one chip, that hand, the next hand, the next hand. Do you know that in 1982... My man, Treetop, ended up, ended up coming back, and he won the World Poker Tournament. What you got to hear right now, family, if God has breath in your lungs, if you're here today, this is not an accident. It's not over until God says it's over. You can't quit. Point number two, you can't compare. And Pastor Justin did a phenomenal job week three of Songfest, so I'm not going to elaborate here uh, too much. Uh, but, but I do want to uh, uh, hit on a couple of things as far as comparison. Comparison is the thief of joy. Write that down. It's the thief of joy. The more that you look at what other people have, you'll start looking at what you have. You'll start taking an inventory. And what will happen is joy will begin to leak. 
Joy will begin to escape as you compare and look at what other people have instead of what you have. It's also the killer of uniqueness. It's the thief of joy, and it's also the killer of uniqueness. You start looking at other people and say, man, I wish I could speak like him. I wish I looked like that person, or I wish I looked like her, or I wish I could do this or do that. And little by little, I don't know if there's any MMA fighters in the house, but a rear naked choke comes up. And your own uniqueness, you start to become a copycat. And God didn't make you to be a copycat. He called you to be you. He called you to be you. And so we just can't compare. What would have happened had the guy with the two? Imagine that. And he would have started complaining, but master, master, God, I don't, why did I only get two? Why didn't I at least have three, at least have four? Why'd you give him five? You can't compare. You can't quit. You can't compare. The third one is you have to be careful on who guides you. You have to be careful on who guides you. Any uh, basketball fans in the house? Anybody? All right, basketball. You ever see a, a game, my man LeBron James, he, he's coming down. He's, he's, he has the full court. He's coming down the, the, uh, on the fast break. And all the time, it always happens. There's somebody on the sideline. LeBron, shoot it. Le LeBron, pass it. Hey, number 28 is open. Does LeBron James listen to him? No, it would be foolish. That would be stupid. But how is it? How is it that many of us will take guidance and take direction from people who have zero context, zero experience? How is it that we open up our hearts and we are fully transparent with people we don't even know, or better yet, people who are not even for you? I read a book, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't my, my, my mind, I don't read too many books, but this book I read, <laughs> and it was an amazing author, amazing communicator, Pastor T.D. Jakes. He was talking about three different buckets, that people fall into one of three different buckets in this life. And, and these people you're going to come in contact with as you're navigating this journey. The first bucket are comrades. Write that down. Comrades. Comrades. Now, comrades are not for you, nor are they for what you are for. Comrades are only in your life so long as you can help them have a win, a victory against someone or something. An example of this is a neighbor. Every single day you see them. You honk the horn, you invite them to action church. Every single Christmas, you send the kids over there with a little bit of cocoa and with some peppermints and an invitation. He never says hi to you. Every time the dog goes to his, his yard, he looks at you with that face. You know the face, and you're like, sorry, sir, sorry. And you go over there, and you clean up the mess. And, 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 but, but one day, he comes to the house. Hey, Eddie, how you doing, man? Uh, can I have a word with you? Yeah, 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 come on in, have a seat. And you start talking, and man, you start gelling with the guy, man. You're like, okay, this is my boy. This guy could be my boy here. And then he drops it 15 minutes into the conversation. He says, hey, you know, the HOA board, uh, they're increasing the dues, and I could really use your help with, with, with coming against the, the HOA president and the board. Like, this can't happen. And you're like, oh, okay, well, yeah, no, we're boys, and, and we're good. The minute that the HOA board is no longer an issue, He'll be going back to being the neighbor who ignores you because he's a comrade. The second bucket or the second group of people are constituents. Constituents. It's very important that you know who's guiding you in this life. That's the point here. Now, constituents, you may have heard the, the term in politics. Constituents are not for you. They are only for what you are for so long as what you are for is what they are for. Does that make sense? We're again, or we're good? All right, all right. So what does that mean? And in politics, we call it President Trump, Biden, Nancy, you name it. The minute, the minute that their agenda and what they are for is no longer what the constituents are for, bye, bye. And there are people in our lives that are comrades. There are people in our lives that are constituents that, that yeah, so long as you're for what they are for, they're with you, they're ride or die. But, 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 but when, when something happens or you change your, your beliefs and you, or you find who God is and you begin to walk the, 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 the plan of the intended destiny that God has for your life, a comrade or a constituent, they, they, will, they will fall to, to meet, fail to meet your expectation. The third group of people, the third bucket, are confidants. Are confidants. And if you have only a few of these confidants in life, 
You're a blessed man, a blessed woman. See, confidants, they're for you. Like when your daughter's in the hospital, they come and see you. When, when, you're, when you're waiting on God for a miracle, they're praying for you. When, when things are going bad and, and they're in your corner, they are for you. When you cry, they cry. When, when you win, they're not jealous. They're happy for you. They celebrate with you. And you know what? If you don't have any confidants in your life, this is a great place where you can find them. I'll tell you all the confidants I have in my life. I found them right here. We just kicked off our fall group semester. And I'll tell you, if you don't have that, join a small group. There, there are people who will pray with you. I was just talking to Louis Lugo, our, our prayer coordinator yesterday. These guys, 12 guys coming together. They don't even know each other yet. Week one of, of, of the semester, praying for each other. Looking out, who do you have in your corner that is standing with you? You can't quit, you can't compare, and you got to be careful on who guides you. And the fourth point, and the most important one, and real fair, this, is, this is it though. If you don't get this fourth one, it's impossible to do one, two, or three. And that is you need Jesus. Uh-oh. I know it's a Jesus juke pastor. Here it was. I, I, I get it. I knew it was coming. But, but, but the reality is, apart from him, you could do nothing. John 15, I am the vine. You are the branches. Apart from you, you could do nothing. You see, apart from Jesus, you're going to quit. You may have a good 10 years, 20 years, 30, 40 years. But living in a fallen world, seeing loss, I've buried babies. I buried babies in front of moms. I buried moms in front of babies. I buried you, you. This is a fallen world. And eventually the weight of this life will crush you. Apart from Jesus, you're constantly going to compare. Constantly looking at what other people have. Never taking into account and being grateful for what you have. Without Jesus, you're constantly going to be guided by what's popular, what's in, what the culture is saying. And, and you'll constantly be guided by your own opinions and preferences. This political party, that political party, going here and going there. Never living out the, the true calling, the true walk that God has for you in this life. And apart from Jesus, you don't have eternal life. You see, but with this Jesus, I need you to listen, guys. This is not, it's not an accident that you're here. And, and I really need you to just receive this real quick. If you're watching online, just receive it. With Jesus, instead of seeing trials and, and issues for what those are, you'll see them as opportunities. Like, like the book of James says that you'll consider it joy when you face trials of many kinds. Because when your faith is tested, your endurance will have an opportunity to grow. And when your endurance is fully developed, you will be complete and lacking nothing. That now the troubles and the issues of life, you look at them differently. You look at them as an opportunity to profess who you are and whose you are. A child of the Most High God. With Jesus, you're not going to compare anymore. You're going to start looking because there's work to do. You got work to do. And you got something in you. And so you'll start identifying the gifts, whether it be one, three, five, ten, whatever it is. But if it's that one, you're going to identify it. And you're going to develop it and you're going to get good at it. And you're going to say, all right, God, this is what you've given me. I'm going to work it. I'm going to put it to use. And then I'm going to make a difference in the lives of others. With this Jesus, you're not just going to be guided by just whatever. You receive Jesus. You accept Jesus. You receive the Holy Spirit. And now the Holy Spirit guides you. You're not just guided by whatever comes your way or whatever sounds pretty cool. But no, no, no. You're guided by the Word of God. The Bible says that the Word of God is like a lamp onto our feet. The Bible also says that the righteous, their steps are ordered by God. And real quick, you may hear that word righteous. You may say, no, that ain't, that ain't me, Eddie. So that can't be me. Then I'm, I'm guided by God because I'm not righteous. But what did, what did the Bible say about Abraham? It was credited to him as being righteous. Why? Because he believed, not because of works. And that's what, it ha that's what happens there when we believe in this Jesus. And when we receive this Jesus, we have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever would believe in him, whoever, would not perish but have everlasting life. 
The next verse, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him all may be saved. During our 21 days of prayer, I had a a thought that I shared with with the people that were in the room. And I I, I came across Philippians 2.6. And it really just the, the Holy Spirit, is, as when we receive Jesus and we open up the Word, now the words, they illuminate because it's living and active. And, and I was reading this, Philippians 2, 6, it says, it says, although he was God, this is Jesus here, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Man, what a God. Yet he set aside his divine privileges and took up a body, a posture of a servant. And finding himself in a human body, he submitted himself in obedience to God's perfect will, obedience that put him on a cross for you and for me. That it was in that that he paid the price. He paid the debt. For the wages of sin is death. And Jesus said, hey, I got you. I got you. And if you would believe in who I am and what I did and the price that I paid for you, just like that, you have access to the Father. And that's the reality. There's only one way to the Father. Jesus says a very bold statement. And either you're going to believe it or you're not. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. No one comes to the Father but through me. I have a story, a, a story I want to share, and it's about a, a young, beautiful little girl. Her, her parents are uh, 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 immigrants uh, from Cuba. Uh, they came in 1980 in the, in the Mariel to escape communist Cuba. And in 81, she was born in Miami, and beautiful little girl. She had two additional siblings, and at just a couple years old, her, her daddy walks out on, on the home. Another man comes into the home. She's only in elementary. And this man did things to her that no man should ever do. She brings it to her mom and tells her mom what's happening. Little girl. Her mom doesn't believe her. She gets older. Brings it to her mom again and says, Mom, either it's him or me. I, like, this is happening. And her mom, her mom chooses him. She goes out of the house and living with other family and, and, and meets this boy. She meets this boy and they fall in love and they do things that they should not have done and she gets pregnant. And her boyfriend convinces her, her boyfriend persuades her, her boyfriend, uh, he, he convinces her and persuades her to have an abortion. She was devastated. Devastated. But one day, one day this girl found Jesus. And it all began to shift. Because when she accepted this Jesus, she received the Holy Spirit. And now she was able to get set free from the past that was holding her back for so long. She was able to to let go of unforgiveness and bitterness. Which she would have never been able to do by herself. She became a mom. An amazing wife, a business owner. And intelligent with a a master's degree and and kept up and God would just use her. She identified those gifts and used her. And that girl, she's my wife. And I just want to tell you that I am so blessed to have you in my life. I thank God for you daily, for the woman that you are and how you represent Jesus in this life. And that boy, The 18 year old boy who premeditated the murder of his first child, that was me. That was me. But I too one day, at my lowest point, addicted to drugs, making horrible decisions, 
When everybody had abandoned me, all the comrades, all the constituents had left me, no confidants in my life, I called out to this Jesus. And he saved me. He heard me. And he would rescue me. And through a process, he would remove the chains of, of, of sin, repurpose me. And then he would show me the gifts that he's given me. And, and then now, I'm a pastor. Love you too, my brother. Love you too. Maybe you're in here and you've taken an account as to the cards that you've played along this thing of life. You say, man, I, I wish I could have that one back and you can't. Well, I, I wish I would not have played that one. Had I had that one back, I would have been okay. I would have been all right. I should have never let that person out of my life. I should have never done this or that. You can't do anything about that. But one thing you can do is receive the free gift of salvation, this Jesus who changes it all. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to give you the opportunity right now to receive this Jesus. Or maybe you're, you're in here and, and, and you've accepted Jesus in the past, but you've never truly took an account to what gifts and talents he's given you. And if you were to face the master today, you would not be able to give an account to what you did. You wouldn't be like the first two servants. And that today there's this renewing of a commitment that you're going to invest, that you're going to work so that he can be glorified and that you can make a difference in this life. So if you're in here, I don't want you to come on up, but as a sign of faith, I want to pray for you. So if you're in here right now and you want to acknowledge that you are a sinner, We've all sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. And it's all right because he died for you when you were yet a sinner. That when the people mocked him and spit on him and pierced him, he utters the words, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And so if you're ready to turn and repent, accept Jesus in your life, as a sign of faith right now, I want you to raise your hand right now so I can pray for you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Somebody someday. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? I see you in the back. Thank you. Just say a prayer, something like this as I say it out loud. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for today, for orchestrating this day to take place, that you love me so much. That you would allow me to tune into this message and hear how good and faithful you are. Jesus, I profess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you are Lord. Come into my life. Make me different. That I will have the endurance to run and not quit. That I will have a, an understanding of what I have and not look to compare. That I will be guided by the almighty God. Taking advantage of the opportunities that you present me with. And that on that day, I will hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give God some praise in the house.